latest Saudi and U.S. brokered ceasefire looks much like this failed attempt before it, making it clear Sudan's warring generals have no intention of laying down arms. Near constant gunfire continues to echo across the Sudanese capital, and heavily armed fighter jets can be seen streaking low across the Khartoum skyline as civilians, including several thousand foreign nationals, remain caught in the crossfire. Like Amr Osman, who's from Scotland. Here's the bus. He shows us the bus he and his family are considering boarding to Egypt, a 13-hour journey through yeah. dangerous terrain. Are you not worried about putting your family on this bus and driving all those many hundreds of miles to the border? I'm worried, but I think I'll be more worried if I stay. For more than a week, Sudan's army chief, General Abdel Fattah al-Burhan, has been battling for power against his former ally turned bitter rival, General Mohamed Hamdan Degalo, the commander of the nation's feared paramilitary force known as the Rapid Support Forces. Hundreds of diplomats, including American, were evacuated over the weekend in daring, high-risk rescue missions. But an estimated 16,000 U.S. nationals remain trapped as the fighting only gets worse. I don't have any plans or announcements to make about the United States deploying peacekeepers to Sudan, to putting American boots on the ground to try to keep the peace in Sudan. That is not presently in contemplation. I don't expect it will be.